Hi, folks. Thank you for joining us today for our session on uh, understanding RRSPs uh, and life after graduation. I'm going to get us started with a brief land acknowledgement. Uh, so Toronto is in the Dish with One Spoon uh, territory. The Dish with One Spoon is a treaty between the Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee, uh, and Mississaugas that bound them to share the territory and protect the land. Subsequent Indigenous nations and peoples, newcomers, uh, uh, and Europeans have all been invited into this treaty in the spirit of peace, friendship, and respect. Um, so that's a land acknowledgement that we always like to provide at the beginning of our events to center us, to think about how uh, colonialism impacts uh, really everything that we do, especially when we're talking about finances. Uh, there's a lot to unpack there and we ask people to center themselves on that. We're joining you from, uh, again, the, the Dish with One Spoon uh, territory, but you might be joining us uh, from anywhere uh, across uh, Turtle Island or Canada, or maybe even abroad. Uh, so we always encourage you to check out native-land.ca uh, uh, to learn more about the territory that you're residing on. Uh, so thank you. And thank you, Maddie, for posting that in the chat. And we'll post it over to Facebook as well shortly. Uh, so today uh, we have Shams here with us. Uh, so I'm just going to quickly read uh, Shams' bio. So MD Shams uh, Udin uh, has a Bachelor of Commerce and a Master's of Commerce and an MBA uh, in Finance and a CPAA. Uh, their current occupation uh, is that they've been teaching uh, for 10 years in the School of Business at a college in Toronto, uh, and they've also taught in uh, London, uh, United Kingdom. Uh, they have over 15 years experience uh, working in Canada and abroad in various positions. Uh, they were responsible for managing budgets and activities, uh, audits, accounts, and administration, and uh, is a financial analyst. Uh, and uh, some of their achievements is that they've developed courses, edited textbook chapters based on the changes that took place in Canada since 2011. Uh, they've also done extensive research on financial markets uh, with the topic of the role of the stock exchange in corporate funding. Uh, and they've established and implemented projects for underprivileged people in education, health, and economic sustainability of their lives to make them self-reliant. Um, uh, and they've also uh, done a lot of uh, work as a, a co-coach around case competitions um, and we're really happy to have you here with us, Shams. Uh, and I think that bio speaks perfectly to how you're going to really help us out in getting to understand RRSPs uh, and how we can do that with rising tuition costs and, and life expenses, especially during a pandemic. So I'm gonna pass it over to you. So thank you. Thank you, Corey. Uh, uh, let's start, uh, our time is very limited. Uh, let's start. Uh, about uh, the topic that we are going to talk about. Uh, uh, the situation we are in now, it's very, very difficult. Uh, COVID and uh, all other uh, things are happening that is impacted, uh, impacting our economic situation. Regardless, we'll have to uh, do some basic stuff, you know, in our life to save money and to pay off debt, uh, controlling our expenses. From that point of view, uh, regardless of the situation, as I, I said earlier, we will have to do some basic uh, things and follow some basic steps. I sometimes call them a golden rule that uh, you'll have to have a plan. And based on your plan, you have to have your budget. And in your budget, you will be, of course, uh, tracking your expenses and your sources of income and then based on your income uh, and your expenses, you will have to save money for the future. And then how do you do this? Uh, we will be talking about this. So, uh, and then we have a specific topic about TFSA, tax savings free account, and also RSP. Uh, we'll talk about this a little bit, but let's start with the, uh, uh, budgeting first, which is the most important aspect in our life. Uh, doesn't matter when we started, whether you're a student now, or you just graduated, or you you are about to graduate. Uh, doesn't matter. It's never too late. You have to have a habit of uh, having a budget and be familiar with this. So, what is budgeting? Budgeting is important for your financial stability, ensuring you can pay common expenses like rent tuition, student loans, credit card bills, and entertainment. But what exactly is budgeting? 
it is a proactive approach to organize your finances. Budgeting ensures you're not spending more than you are making. To usually we do if we don't have a budget. Allowing you to plan for short-term and long-term expenses. This is very, very important. So when you prepare a budget uh, based on your plan, then make sure you have short-term goals and long-term. Based on these two, uh, uh, you will have to prepare and come up with a solution and strategy. Uh, so the first thing you have to do, of course, uh, you can prepare budgets for short Short term could be for monthly, could be for a weekly, uh, and of course for quarterly. Uh, but uh, for long term, of course for a year. And then how do you do this? We'll follow uh, those steps. Uh, the most positive thing you can get from your budget is to have a better control in your expenses. Thank you. Uh, so uh, now you see the expenses and income, yeah? It's a little. Uh, the best thing is to have a budget to control your expenses and following uh, protecting uh, your savings for the future and uh, pay off your debt. Now, the most smart people will be, of course, starting with a budget. Now, the tips to prepare a budget will be so budgeting tips, once you get the hang of it, budgeting is easy. However, there are a lot of ways you can get detail, derailed from your budget. Here are some additional tips to help keep you on track with budgeting. So it's important to know the steps and the things you need to consider uh, in your budget. That will keep you uh, track your expenses. Uh, the first thing you'll have to do, you'll have to be honest with yourself. Uh, if you're in a situation that you want to ignore some of the expenses that uh, incurring, uh, maybe you like it. Whatever may be the case, you will have to record each and every expenses that is happening or incurring. So when you first start your budget, if you're not honest about the things you are already spending money on, it's going to be hard to get to set goals and properly track your expenses. Start with your current financial situation and make adjustments after you have assessed where you are at. If you don't have a budget, you will not be able to see the cash inflow and outflow. You may have one sources of income and you may have 10 different sources of deductions or expenses. So how do you control them? It's the budget. Okay, set realistic, uh, but it has to be flexible. Uh, it's easier to stay motivated to stick to your budget if you have clear, realistic goals. And if you allow yourself rewards for completing goals, just to ensure you work those rewards into your budget so you don't have to make up for excess money spent on it. Uh, night out later on. It's difficult to follow exactly the way you're planning, but if you have one, you can always go back and make some changes. The best of all, it will give you the control. Now, pay when you can. When you have debt, for example, tuition, uh, of course, is one of the main uh, debt we have for students. They will be struggling uh, to pay, and those who have graduated, they will be struggling. Uh, the best thing you to have save some money and to pay up your student loan or any other debt you have even if you have a uh, slightest of savings make sure that you are paying up your debt so that will reduce your not only debt but also the interest that will be considered as interest savings uh, so you don't have to wait until payments are due you might find it's easier for you to stay on track if you pay things ahead of when you are, when they are due this will not only help you juggle your payments it is also great for your credit to never miss a payment. Plan all aspects of your spending. Uh, I would say, you know, usually I do use an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, just say, okay, in one side, one column will be, of course, for all the items, and the next column will be for your sources of income or revenue uh, you earn either as interest or from overtime or from uh, of course, your uh, work are from your company. 
whatever your source of earning, put it in one column, and then create columns for each and every expenses. You will be surprised to see at the end of the month that what is going on, that your life could have been much better if you had a plan. And uh, if you're not even organized, myself, I was not organized for many, many years. And when I started actually following one of my friends, example, he was writing even for 10 pence of expense. I was not happy. I said, what are you doing? And uh, he saved at least 25% more than I had. So it's very, very important to track all those expenses uh, next to your uh, source of income and you will see the outcome of it. And of course you can plan once you have control over your expenses, you can plan for your savings and for your future and growth. Now consider how you are buying as well as what you are buying. Plan your errands so you don't have to make unnecessary trips Make lists when you go to the grocery store so you don't forget something you'll have to pick up later. So what is the cost here if you have to go back and forth to groceries or anything we do? Uh, it will cost your fuel. Of course, there is a, a chance of, uh, God forbid, may have something happen. So you can always avoid if you have a plan for going back and forth to a store uh, to buy something or any work you do any work you do. Uh, so it's really important uh, to have a plan of uh, all aspects of your life that you, you are going to do, or, uh, it's going to happen. Now, I would say, please go to this website to see the seven steps uh, to getting started. Uh, what's this called, budgeting steps. Uh, so. It's, it's important to go through those steps. Uh, it will take a long time for me to go each and every step. So I may need an hour, so which you don't need, honestly. And I cannot, uh, what's this called? Rather explain this here due to the time constraints. But the most important thing is to have a budget. And as I said, prepare a spreadsheet and write down your income and expenses, track those expenses, and you will see the difference. Uh, the most important thing, of course, once you have savings, which you'll have to, the, uh, we are struggling under these difficult circumstances because of COVID. But even if there's no COVID, uh, we can't even be, we cannot even be relaxed because when you're relaxed, expenses goes out of control. So the most important thing is to have a budget, track your expenses, that will help you to save money and pay off your debt. And if you are debt free, you know the light. Of course, from any sources here, yeah, uh, you are expecting to earn or uh, you are earning. It should be considered after tax. Then you will know this is a net income, a net earnings, and from there, you deduct all your expenses. So earnings can be made either from your work or the job you are doing or, or student uh, grant and from, well, as gifts anyway. Uh, whatever the sources of earning, place them monthly, month-wise or even uh, quarterly and make sure you are tracking all your expenses and putting all your expenses in those spreadsheets. And at the end of each week, please check them out and you will be uh, uh, able to see the difference uh, it's making because of the budget. Now I'll share with you uh, another uh, thing, how to track those expenses. Then I will go and talk about the savings and investments that you need to make and we can gain from there in order to pay off our debt, either student loan or credit card loan uh, and all other debt. Let's talk about the now. So uh, these are some basic uh, points uh, I wanted to uh, share with you, uh, how to track those expenses. Uh, track all expenses, even uh, the little things. Think of everything you pay in a month 
or even daily, honestly. So we do have to do keep a receipt of those expenditures here yeah, and uh, staple them together. It's like accounting, yeah, they do. And just uh, write down those expenses at the end of the day. Use receipts or bank statements to ensure you think of everything. Track uh, spending cash as miscellaneous or with another category that makes sense. Just to ensure you track it. Plan for all types of expenses. Don't just track the obvious expenses like rent and auto insurance. Make sure you include variable expenses like gasoline, uh, pet care. Plan for frequent expenses. Things like gifts, license plate renewal, and doctor's visit may only come up, come up a couple of times a year. Planning for these expenses allows you to work them into your monthly payments or set aside some money for them ahead of time. Use accurate descriptions. Track everything by what it, it is rather than where you purchased it so you know how much you spend in certain categories. Just knowing where you start shop doesn't help you keep track of the details of what it is you spend money on. Update your budget daily. The easiest way to keep on track with your budget is to keep it updated as often as possible. Tracking your money will take minimal time if done daily, and you will be much less likely to forget something. Finally, budget monthly, not by the paycheck. It forces you to think longer term without feeling your budget is impossible to maintain. So you can do it monthly. What do you have to do if you uh, make your transactions or like pay via bank or get via bank, you have all the information in the bank statement. Of course, you can log in and get the bank statement. So all the expenses and income details. But if you use debit card or credit card, you will have the receipt. And of course, keep all these receipts, staple them together, and then uh, put them and do them at the end of each month. So you can do it monthly. Uh, weekly could be challenging, uh, that's for sure. Uh, but then I would say uh, it could be uh, very useful if you can do this weekly basis. So that was the first step we needed to take. And I thought uh, it's very, very important for uh, those to share with you. Uh, most of us, you know, even those business students, accounting finance students, we do not keep track of expenses. We do not prepare budgets. We think of budget only for the company. Uh, if you're an executive, you'll be responsible for preparing. But for each of us, for an individual budget is very, very important. That will help us not to track expenses, but to help us to grow, save money and pay off the debt at the end of the day. Now, uh, I will be sharing with you uh, the uh, investment opportunities and uh, what's this called? Uh, saving some money apart from your, uh, what's this called? Uh, the job you're working. There are many different ways we can uh, gain and save money. So I'll be talking about a few of those things. One is will be TFSA tax free savings accounts and another one will be RRSP, uh, of course. Okay, and registered retirement savings plan. Tax-free savings accounts, uh, it started uh, early. Uh, it's one of the most important aspects of uh, the investment and savings account since uh, 1957 when we had RSP. Overview of tax-free savings account TFSA the tax free savings accounts came into effect in 2009. It has been received with great fanfare and has appealed to all Canadians, regardless of their financial situation or their stage in life. The TFSA has been called the most significant concession by the government to Canadians since the introduction of the RSP, Registered Retirement Savings Plan, in 1957. So, what are the eligibility criteria to be eligible? Uh, uh, to, uh, to, for TFSA. The plan enables a resident of Canada who has attained age 18 and who has a valid social insurance number to set aside money in a tax-free account. 
there's no maximum age by which the TFSA must be collapsed, the funds can remain in the account throughout the life of the account holder or can be withdrawn and used for any purpose at any time. So once you are 18, you can uh, invest in TFSA. The TFSA can only be registered in an individual name. Joint accounts and spousal accounts are not an option. So it will be on an individual. Subject to provincial legislation, the holder of the account can des designate a beneficiary to receive the property in the plan of falling his or her death. So usually a parents can set up TFSA for the children and then once children get them and children will be dealing with that, parents will have no part to play. There are no limits as to the number of TFSAs. An individual can own, however, his or her cumulative contributions to all TFSAs cannot exceed the stipulated annual contribution limit. So go to this website, you'll be able to see this, but we'll, we'll, I have this here. Uh, contribution uh, eligible investments. TFSA contribution room accumulates each year for individuals who are 18 years of age and older and who are Canadian residents similar to an RSP. Unused contribution room for a given year is not lost. So this is another advantage. If you fail to contribute this year, you will not be losing your, uh, what's this called, rights to uh, invest in it, uh, but rather is carried forward to the following year. This enables an individual who may not have sufficient funds in any one year to maxi maximize his or her contribution to still make use of the unused room in a future year. The TFSA actually goes one step farther than an RSP. Eligible withdrawals from a TFSA in a given year are added to the contribution room at the beginning of the following year. In effect, an individual does not lose is a hard contribution room and falling in eligible withdrawals, he or she can in fact restore room that has already been previously used. So this is the difference from RSP. A significant difference between RSP and a TFSA is that contributions to TFSA are not deductible for tax purposes, which is RSP is deductible. I'll talk about the limit uh, now in the same vein the interest paid on money borrowed to make a TFSA contribution is not tax deductible. This is in keeping with the treatment of funds borrowed to make RSP contributions. So these are significant difference. Yes, there's some pros and cons, but at the end of the day, I think TFSA will be a better investment uh, vehicle. Eligible investments, eligible investments for a TFSA mirror, the qualified investments permitted in an RSP, RRIF, uh, Registered Retirement, I think, Income Fund, and RESP, uh, of course, for students. This uh, includes guaranteed investment certificates, GAC mutual funds, bonds, and securities listed on a designated stock exchange. Not unlike a regular RSP and a self-directed RSP, a conventional TFS is meant to hold basic investments, such as a GAC, uh, which interest rate is quite low anyway, uh, a self-directed TFSA will be declared in order to hold investments such as shares of a publicly listed company. So you'll have the choice, you know, when you have, when you open up TFSA account, you'll have the choice where to invest on mutual funds or any other. GAC depends here, yeah, current economic environment could, may not be stable anyway, uh, but uh, Depending on the time you're investing, and then at that time, the economic environment and financial market stability, you'll be making decisions where to invest. Foreign investments are converted to Canadian dollars for purposes of reporting to the CRA, which means foreign contributions cannot exceed the maximum limit in Canadian dollars. So uh, the limit we have, we have to uh, honor that limit. We cannot exceed this. There is a penalty for that. Common use, uses of a TFSA is flexibility and its relevance across the entire population spectrum are just two, two of the many reasons that account for the popularity of the TFSA and why it has received such rave reviews since its introduction. 
examples of just how flexible the plan is and how the TFSA may be used by your clients uh, addressed below. So two of these main low ind individual uh, income individuals is suited for low income individuals. RSP will be the opposite. Conceptually, the TFSA was designated, designed for individuals with relatively low incomes throughout their working years and into retirement, pe retirement. People in this situation would receive minimal marginal tax value by making RSP contributions while working. Although they would enjoy the benefits of tax deferral while the funds remained in the plan, they would ultimately be taxed on withdrawals from RSP, RSP, or RIF during retirement. Tax free savings account, you know that you will not be paying tax on your earnings. But yes, at the time of withdrawal, uh, retirement, yes, you'll have to pay tax. So the RSP. Moreover, this income stream at retirement could potentially reduce or eliminate certain income tested social welfare benefits, as well as they preclude the person from claiming certain tax credits. Uh, these are very uh, critical uh, things. So we don't, I, I think you can read it later on once I, uh, what's this called, post this. And there's a link uh, for you to go and, and check uh, for the details where RSP contributions have been maximized. For those who maximize their RSP contributions each year, the TFSA provides an alternate tax advantage savings vehicle. In fact, the TFSA goes beyond tax deferral. It is a tax-free savings account. So uh, we'll talk about the limit in a minute. Uh, how much can you make contributions? There is a limit, a cap. You cannot go beyond that. If you go, then there is a penalty for this. Parents who wish to help the adult children uh, child acquire a home or some other major purchase can use their own TFSA or contribute directly to the TFSA of the child to accomplish this objective. Whether done as a gift or a loan in the case of married child, proper documentation should be maintained and thought should be given as to whether or not those funds should be uh, coming out, coming out uh, with the other family assets of the married child, uh, sorry, not become part of the community property that is subject. Sorry, family assets of the married child and his or her spouse or common law partner. Or uh, you have a choice now to specify them. Parents would like want to ensure the TFSA does not become part of the community property that is subject to division in the event of a breakdown in the relationship of their married child. So uh, parents is a choice. Uh, I was speaking to someone, parents seeking to establish large education savings pool for a child. So you can use TFSA individual savings for large expenditure. Uh, their spouses are common law to cover taxes and final expenses on death. I think I need to read this part. Traditionally, the tax liability due on debt and other final expenses have been funded either through the liquidation of state assets or from some form of life insurance. The TFSA can now be added to the list as an alternate method of funding liabilities on debt. Again, the fact the TFSA is still in its infancy, it will take some time before a meaningful amount of funds can be accumulated to service purpose but nevertheless, it is a valid use of account. So you have, the, uh, you have many options to uh, use TFSA uh, for savings purposes. Uh, now, these are the contribution limit we had since the inception of it, 2009 till 2020. Yeah? If you are submitting 2020 tax return, uh, which of course you will be doing it if you haven't done this yet, uh, and then the maximum started with 2009, 5,000. And in 2020, 6,019, 2019, 2020, I think 2021 will be uh, the same and will remain the same. That's what I was reading somewhere, $6,000. So 
a maximum of $75,500. If you haven't contributed yet, uh, since you became uh, 2009, you became 18 years old, you can actually contribute uh, the maximum of $75,500 now, uh, but depending on your age and your contribution. So uh, you have huge amount of opportunity, especially if you are graduating now, uh, you can contribute up to $75,500 maximum for 2021. Now, registered retirement savings plan, the another one uh, uh, investment opportunities which we all should be uh, doing, uh, but it is, has some difference uh, compared to TFSA, uh, but at the end of the day, we'll have to use them both in a way to get the maximum benefits. Mm -hmm. RSP is a trust set up and registered with CRA in accordance with the Income Tax Act to hold certain investment assets intended for retirement. Contributions are deductible from current income within limits. Limit is 18%, I think, till 2020, 18% of your previous year earnings, uh, and the maximum of $27,230, I believe. Payments out of the plan are taxed upon distribution, usually after retirement, when the taxpayer's marginal tax rate is typically lower usually way low. And uh, please go to this website. You can download additional information. Uh, now, the eligibility for RSPs. Taxpayers with earned income can hold an RSP. There's no minimum age requirement that must be met in order to establish an RSP. Of course, you have to be 18 years of age, first of all, and uh, I think 71 years till. There's, however, excuse me, there's, however, a maximum age limit by which an annuitant must remove funds from an RSP. When an annuitant reaches the maximum age limit or any earlier point, if so desired, they can withdraw the funds from RSP in cash, use the RSP proceeds uh, to purchase a registered annuity, roll over the RSP proceeds on a tax deferred basis to RIF. So as you go along, you will learn a lot, but at this point in time, you will just have to uh, plan yourself, have your budget, and uh, invest in those uh, TFSA and RSP. So uh, how do you calculate your uh, contributions uh, on, uh, based on your earned income? The current contribution limit is based upon an individual's earned income from the previous year, which I told you are uh, 18% maximum, whichever is lower are $27,230. Earned income includes the following, net income from employment or an office before deductions for registered pension plan contributions. Okay. Uh, and then self-employment income for individuals operating their own business or businesses or working as active partners in business partnerships. Allocations from employee profit sharing plans Taxable benefits from waste loss replacement programs, taxable uh, alimony and maintenance receipts, royalties for works, uh, books or music or uh, inventions, unemployment benefits other than from the federal employment insurance plan. Okay, research grants, net of related expenses, net rental income on real property, Canadian source of business, employment income, while a non-resident, oh, okay, a disability benefit under the Canada Pension Plan, uh, Quebec Pension Plan. Okay, these are the earned income. Uh, the following items are deducted from earned income. The fund, the funds of salary before you become eligible uh, for earnings. So these are the, uh, what's this called? Items you will have to deduct current year net rental losses on real property, uh, current year business losses. So go over this uh, chart. Uh, these are very standard and very common where you'll be deducting uh, from your earned income. Now, uh, we are near to the end, RSP over contributions. Over contributions to an RSP that exceeds so if 
an individual uh, contributes more than uh, the maximum limit, uh, there is a penalty 1% or the maximum of $2,000 are subject to penalty tax of 1% per month. Uh, the cumulative access amount is calculated as uh, access amount on deducted RSP contributions made after 1990, including uh, current taxation year taxable amounts received out of an RSP or RIIF. Amounts received out of an RSP. So these are the uh, list of items you will be looking at. Uh, and then uh, the final, uh, just the difference between uh, TFSA and RSP. One of the questions planners, uh, as a financial planner, are faced is with, uh, is it better to contribute to an RSP or should the funds be allocated to a TFSA? The fact of the matter is that for most individuals, it is not a case of either or but rather a case incorporating both plans into the mix such that together they yield or return the maximum possible benefits for a client. Yeah? That's what I said at the beginning. You have to have different investment vehicles and different uh, areas where you can uh, take the uh, maximum advantage of benefits. Yeah? Uh, so at different times, you will get benefits from TFSA another time from RSP. The essential difference between TFSA and RSP revolves around the tax implications of both plans. A deduction can be claimed for RSP contributions. Withdrawals from TFSA are not taxable. Yeah, this is uh, the advantage, of course. Uh, if you, and then, so when comparing the relative merits of these vehicles, a key consideration will be the marginal tax rate at the time of the annuitant makes an RSP contribution. And the MTA at the time of the annuitant withdraws fund from the RSP, which is usually at the time of retirement. Yeah? Uh, the other factor to keep in mind is what is done with the tax refund generated by claiming an RSP deduction. Uh, as I said, you can, uh, RSP deductions can be made over 18% or a maximum of $27,230, whichever is lower. Uh, now, if you look at this little table here, uh, is if the MTR for RSP contributions is higher, so it's basically they're saying approximately the same, no preference as to TFSA or RSP. So just go over uh, by this. Uh, as I said, you know, there may be uh, benefits at some point for TFSA and for RSP. Therefore, as uh, a financial analyst or planner, uh, I would advise you to go and look at those opportunities. And we should be uh, actually thinking about these two, uh, TFSA and RSP, to get the maximum benefits at different times. Uh, if you look at on the top left side, left side uh, with the red hyperlink, an individual earning a low income who makes an, R an RSP contribution may actually be doing so to his or her detriment. Yeah? So if your uh, earnings are low, I think TFS will be a better option than RSP. Uh, the rationale for this is that this individual may face a higher tax rate at retirement upon receipt of government benefits, such as CPP, uh, OAS, and GIS, which in turn may impact his or her ability to claim tax credits, such as the age amount. So there is a age limit for you to claim the maximum benefits for CPP and for RSP, uh, for TFSA, uh, it had the most uh, flexibility compared to CPP and RSP. Uh, that's all I, all I have for today's uh, presentation uh, because the time constraints, I'm sorry, I've taken a little more time than uh, probably 
allocated. Uh, thank you, Carol and Corey. Thank you for uh, your help yeah, and setting up things. Yeah. And thank you, Carol, as well. Well, thank you for your time and um, good luck on your next class. <laughs> no, you had a yes, good <laughs> 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 so have a good day and thank yes, you all yes. for joining Caesar. Bye-bye.